friends, well today we're going to have a look at how to play all the chords in the key of C. Now in the last video you saw how to play a C chord and you're going to have to use this, apply the same method to each of the chords that we look at today. There's going to be six chords, one of them is C which you already know, but you need to go through the same uh, procedure for playing them and getting them clean as you did with the C chord. So I would strongly recommend that you uh, look at the previous video if you haven't seen that one already. Now you'll also need to um, use your clip-on tuner, which we talked about in video three. If you didn't, haven't seen that one, then do check that one out first. Get your guitar in tune, and then also you'll need to be sitting properly, which we looked at in video four. So if you haven't seen any of those, then uh, I would recommend watching them first. And uh, we're also going to be using, well, you can use your thumb if you wish, but if you want to use a pick, then I would use a heavier pick, not a really thin one. And again, we talked about those in the second video. So it all works together. If you haven't seen the previous videos, the information's there in those ones. And um, if you want to know about buying picks, then in video two, just uh, click on the description, click on more below the video, and it will show you the different sizes of picks that I recommend that you have. Okay, okay. now I said that we were going to look at all the chords in the key of C, but what is a key? Well, in video four, we looked at what we call the, the major scale, which is a series of notes which when they played one after the other sound harmonious. And then in the last video, we looked at a chord, the chord of C, which is a group of notes that sound harmonious when they're all played together. Well, a key is a group of chords that all sound harmonious when they're played together. And you can play them in any order. The chords in any key will always go together. So, A little bit like playing a major scale but we're playing a scale in chords if that makes any sense so these chords are a family they harmonize together whatever order you play them in well there's a bit more to it than that but we'll leave that for music theory for now all we need to do is learn how to finger each of these chords individually and there'll be six chords in the key strictly speaking there are seven but one of them is what's called a diminished chord and we'll deal with those all later they're very rare not normally used. Usually if you have a song in the key of C, it will use these six chords or some of them, quite often two, three or four of the chords will be all that's used in the song. In fact, there are millions of songs that just use these chords. And if you have um, a couple so that you can change the key, the pitch of the instrument by putting a couple on the neck, then in fact you only need these chords. We'll be kind of painting in primary colours a little bit and not have any tonal subtleties, but you could play any song with these six chords and a capo and sort of make a, make a, a presentable um, thing of it. Hmm. Now having said that, we will be learning chords in other keys because if you get your capo on too, high up the neck, it gets a bit silly. You sort of turn into George Formby, so you want to keep your capo down here. So it's good to learn some of the keys. Anyway, let's get into it. Six chords for you to practice, and this is going to take a little while to get under your fingers, so we'll, we'll give, you, give you some time. Okay, now here are the six chords that we're going to learn. These comprise the key of C, apart from the diminished chord we're ignoring, as I said. And I would advise make taking a screenshot of this and uh, making a copy yourself, print it out. Um, I've designed this on my computer, so you could do the same thing. Or just get a piece of paper and draw it out with a, a pen and a ruler. But keep a copy of this in your file with all six chords on it. We'll have a closer look at them in a moment. But hopefully you have got a sheet music stand now and you need to keep this sheet with all six chords on it 
on your music stand in front of you as you practice. Now the first chord in the key of C is obviously C chord, that's the root chord in this key. It's normally where a song would start and where it would finish. But we covered that in the last video, so if you haven't seen that, go back and check it out now. Now, the first new chord we want to look at is called A minor, capital A, small m. When you say small m, it means it's a minor chord. Now, well, I'll show you how to play this um, practically in a moment, but it's almost the same as the C chord. The only difference is that the third finger comes down from that fifth string third fret and tucks under the second finger on the third string second fret. And finally, notice that the top string and the fifth string are played open and I've got a question mark over the bass string. Now, as I said last time, a question mark means try to avoid playing that string. But if you do play it, don't worry about it. So just play the top five strings if you possibly can. So let's get up close and personal on that. And remember when we played a C chord, we put our first finger on the second string just behind the first fret. We put our middle finger on the fourth string just behind the second fret. And we stretched out with our ring finger onto the fifth string. So what we're gonna do is take that ring finger and tuck it underneath the middle finger on the third string at the same fret, the second fret again. So it's a bit of a finger squasher. Now we've got to slide this finger back a little bit. It's got to bunch up to make room for this one to fit in. It won't fit otherwise. So this finger is now not in an ideal position. We like it to be up near the fret. It's going to be halfway back, but we can't do anything else because the fingers won't fit. So there we go. This string, second string, first fret, fourth string, second fret, move that back a little bit and tuck this ring finger underneath at the second fret of the third string. Now, as we said in the last video, we need to be playing the strings one at a time. Got a bit of a buzz there. Okay, and you need to check through them. It's a bit muffled there. So you need to just check through which fingers are doing what. This was all in the last video, how we do it, why you get a buzz, why you get muffling, and what you can do about it. Check it out if you haven't done that already. And eventually we don't want to play because you can't hear that, that that top string is not ringing out, but you can't hear it play all the strings together so play them one at a time as we said in the previous video that's your A minor chord lovely chord now the next chord we want to look at is a G7 or G7 chord and the shape of your fingers is almost the same as it was for the C chord sloping across the fingerboard we'll see that in a moment um, but it's a little bit more stretched out You'll also notice that the second, third and fourth strings are all played open and that we can play the bass string this time, which we were advised to avoid with the C chord and the A minor chord, but this time we can play all six strings. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so here we are up close again. And if we were starting from our C position, which you might be familiar with by now, what we're doing is we're moving this first finger across from the second string to the first string still at the first fret and we're moving this finger from the fourth string to the fifth string and this finger from the fifth string to the sixth string the bass string now that's quite a stretch for your hand and as we said in the last video when we were looking at how to play the c chord you need to have your fingers sloping across the fingerboard it's no use trying to play it like this you won't be able to stretch out so get hold of that and play the notes one at a time again. Well, now that's buzzing a little bit. Okay, let's try and get a little bit nearer to the fret. Okay. Now this one's muffled, so it's probably that finger lying across it. So I'll try and get 
drop my wrist a bit and get my fingers to stand up. Let's try that again. Now, just as a matter of interest, um, we need this G7 chord because if we just have, let's take the two chords that we've done so far, which you see in A minor. I just keep playing those. I can't really finish. Just carry on playing the song forever. But if I play the G7, it creates a musical tension. It's then resolved by returning to my root chord, my C chord. So you could have a song that's only in C and G7 because it, that G7 will let you finish the song. You've heard the orchestra's going <laughs> then have to go <laughs> if they want to finish. So it's an important chord. Now the next chord we're going to look at is E minor, capital E, small m, E minor. Um, it's a very easy chord to play. It's not used that often in the key of C. It's not as common as the A minor chord, um, but it does occur. There are certain people who use it a lot in their music. Um, and I haven't marked the finger positions here because which fingers you use rather depends on which chord you're coming from or going to it all depends on the song however it is a six string chord you play all six strings and we'll have a look at that in a moment okay well for this chord we can place our first finger on the fifth string just behind the second fret and we can tuck our middle finger underneath it on the fourth string same fret just behind the second fret now again, like we did with the A minor chord, we'll have to get this finger to move back a little bit from the ideal position to fit this one in underneath it. As an alternative, and again, as I said, depending on the song, we might want to use our middle finger on the fifth string and our ring finger on the fourth string. So it can be that or it can be that. Now this is actually, these two fingers are stronger. So for preference, I would, I would use those. But you, you, you have to do it both ways. So place your fingers in position. Again, make sure you're sitting correctly, make sure you're relaxed. Use your thumb or your heavy pick. dramatic chord we're playing all six strings it's a minor chord it's dark and powerful um, lovely chord occurs in the next two keys that we're going to learn as well so it's well worth practicing this and it's guaranteed success all right well you're doing very well you can look back over all this and take your time with it um, that's the advantage of a video but uh, we have a, two more chords to look at and this one again is an occasional minor in the key of C. It's not particularly common but it does occur. It's capital D, small m, D minor, another minor chord. You notice that it's a bit of a finger squasher on the top three strings. We play the fourth string open. We try to avoid the fifth string but now we've come to the first time where we've seen a cross in a chord and that's over the sixth string and that cross it's not X marks the spot, it means do not play this string. It will sound really bad. The fillings will fall out of everyone's teeth. So avoid the sixth string. Play the top four. If you hit the fifth one, don't worry about it, but definitely don't play the six. So we'll have a look at that just now. All right, well, I always think a good way to remember this um, chord is with the starting position. Once you get the starting position, the rest, tends to fall into place and I think one, 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 first finger, first string, first fret, all the ones, one, first finger, first string, first fret. Then we miss a string, we skip over, we go to the third string and we go up a fret and then we go up another fret and we go in between. So we have 
first string, first fret, third string, second fret, and then our ring finger goes on the second string at the third fret. Like that. So we want to play just four strings. And we want to try and avoid the fifth string, but if we do play it, it's not too bad. But what we don't want to do is play that bass string. That is really horrible. So try and just stick to the top four, possibly five strings at the most playing it but for now we don't want to be playing it like that we want to be playing it one string at a time and I'll just take the four fiddle around with it and see what's muffled what's buzzing check your fingering as we've done with all the other chords and our last chord in this key is the chord everybody loves to hit. This one you'll almost certainly struggle with. Don't worry about it. It'll come in the fullness of time. You probably just have to fudge it for a while once we start playing songs um, because we've got something in this that we haven't seen in any of the other chords and it's called a, a bar. Now it's your finger that forms the bar. It forms it across the top two strings. We'll have a look at this again in a moment. Um, otherwise it's a similar shape to the C chord or the G7 chord the finger sloping across again we try to avoid the fifth string and we definitely don't play the bass string you can see the question mark and the cross there so it's the top four strings ideally so how do we do this infamous bar well we just place our first finger instead of on the first or second string like we've been doing across both strings so that we're holding them both down and uh, a lot of tension this is going to be bad for playing the chord you don't want a lot of tension what we want to do is get a hand round give it a handshake get your hand wrapped round the neck of the guitar and that'll help you to grip tightly keep the finger don't get this hypertension keep your finger bent as always and I know we're not contortionists but if you try to roll your finger slightly on the side see the front of your finger is very soft but the side of your finger is kind of bony and hard so if you can get it just very slightly on the side that all helps and then we want our middle finger on the third string at the second fret and we want our ring finger on the fourth string at the third fret and we're just playing those those top four strings if we play the fifth string it's not too bad but if we play the bass string it doesn't go at all it's not nice so we try and avoid the bass string now this chord is quite difficult to play and uh, it's going to take you a little while to get those top two strings clean. What will happen is it'll be very, very difficult to get that top string to ring out and uh, get the bar on correctly. It takes a while. So don't be patient with yourself. It will come. All right, friends. Well, there's a lot of material there there's a lot to learn and it's going to take you a while to be able to remember all those chord shapes and play them cleanly but i want you to play them individually one at a time don't try and change between the chords there are techniques for changing chords um, which we're going to learn we're going to look at but we don't want to do that at the moment we just want to remember the individual shapes so you play your a minor chord and when you're happy with that you just take your hand off give it a shake, have a little rest, and then play your G7 chord. And then take your hand off and give it a little rest. Try the different chords, try and recognize what they are. Play your E minor chord. Don't try and change between one and the other. Now, because this stage of learning is going to take a little while, the next video isn't going to be about playing, 
it's going to be about learning the notes, or the notes on the bass string anyway. So you can watch that one in the meanwhile and uh, just continue with the chord shapes. And I'll give you some techniques in the next video that you can use to check your progress. Well, that's it apart from a sign off. So I just want to say, remember friends, you can't have everything. Where would you put it? Thank you.